So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are here out in the countryside. Now, if you can tell that my voice isn't matching to the video that you're watching right now, well, it's because it was that windy uh, that, yeah, I didn't think it'd be that much windy. Uh, so, I pretty much talk about the nice view here. Uh, I talk about uh, the car that you can briefly see in the background. And let's just not prolong this bit. I'm just going to cut to the cinematography. So, yeah, let's go. Yeah, MG ZT uh, in British racing green. Right, so if I've just cut into now, then uh, it's windy outside. As I was saying, M47 engine, three series, five series BMWs, they had this exact same engine, which is the M47 engine, which is a diesel and it is turboed. So yeah, uh, not just a diesel. And the torque is honestly, very much surprised by it. I've not had that much experience in terms of like the diesels and even turbos, shall I say, uh, the Cooper that I have naturally aspirated, uh, even though it actually kind of feels like it might have something under the bonnet, which I don't know, but some people have told me it's a bit fast, the Cooper, yeah, it feels a bit faster than it is. Uh, and so is this thing. Now, ever since kind of like when I was younger, I have had some experience in terms of like the brand. It is kind of a, a bit of a nostalgic thing, but the fact is, is that it's a British saloon or sports saloon, you could even say, uh, although it's a two litre diesel, so you might not say that. Although it did come with, after like the engines that come with this, it's either 1.8 litre petrol, and then it goes to two litre diesel, uh, two and a half litre V6, and then also a Ford Mustang, V8, yes. So that bonnet right there, yeah, which is quite not that I've been used to really, um, is enough enough of a size to put a V8 in. And that's what they did. Although all the MGs from this era are actually front wheel drive, I believe the V8 is actually rear wheel drive. And I think they only made it in manual, which makes sense. For the era of this car, which is in 2005. Now, this isn't just any 2005. It's also the facelift, which is, I mean, the facelifts came on the 2005. There's a, there's a full list of things. Now, there's a lot to talk about. I don't want to go on to the things that I like because that's a complete next separate video. This type of age of car, it just, it's, it, it just doesn't feel like a 2005 car. And I don't understand how these prices of these cars aren't higher. Um, on the market. Saying that, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually just appreciate it from now. I'm not gonna go into too many things that I like about the car, but you've got the color matching kind of like interior as well. And that goes on all the way through the back. And then you've got actually green stitching on the seats. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, I'm actually pointing in the wrong direction. Yep, green stitching. I'm trying to show you, but I don't know if I can, if it's gonna be the best quality because I'm using my front facing camera. However, the interior, now you can see some of the dials there. It's actually the plus model, which comes with cruise control. You've got electric windows on the back. And I'm pretty sure there's one something else that I'm missing. But I'm pretty sure if you do a quick Google, you'll be able to tell that what comes with the plus model. Um, so yeah, I've got the Bluetooth even connectivity there. Let me switch back to myself. Uh, I bought a Bluetooth device there, play my own music. Now you might have no noticed there if I'm actually gonna show the clip right before this. This comes with a cassette player. Um, a bit of a surprise since it's a 2005. You'd think it's a bit late to put a cassette player in, but either way, it's there. Do I have a cassette to put in? Um, um, no. Fortunately, there is a cigarette lighter there that I can just about slot in. I can just about fit in an FM transmitter, but the thing is, is that it's a bit, I will not say it's too difficult to get it in and out, but because of the design of this, and they've done, they've designed this completely well, honestly, uh, it's, it still holds up till to this day. That's the thing. I'm not going to talk too much about um, the things that I want to, that I like about it, but the, the quality is is good uh, for this type of car. This nicely goes in, like the cigarette lighter, it kind of hides in. You've got also a cup holder there. Unfortunately, you don't have one on the other side there, but it just looks like there should be something there. Like if you see this, it looks like there should be something there, but when I press it, there's, there's nothing there. Um, bit of a unfortunate thing by the way you've got one cup holder better than nothing this also has a sport button here sport and winter drive as well so if you push it towards up where um you'll see a notification on your dash saying sd um which it'll already be in drive but then also they put sport in front of the drive and what it does i did have a look on the forums as to what does it do and it actually 
I think it either drops down a gear or the revs actually kick up. Now, correct me if I'm wrong about that. I think it's probably, I think the revs kick in more, the revs kick in higher and that the gears drop. Yeah, just as you can see, the cassette player there, automatic. You've got the steering wheel here. I think I've already showcased that, you know, and you've got the steering controls here and the kind of green, this is kind of like a bit of a, like a Placantara or, um, or suede, but it's, it's something that adds to the kind of classiness of the car. Um, and now of course this is a, this is a British, um, car built within Great Britain, um, before the kind of Chinese takeover happened and that the takeover happened days after this car got produced, which makes it, if I'm correct, probably is one of the very last British racing green, um, MG ZTs to have come out of the production. Um, and yeah, um, unfortunately that's how things are, you know, MG are now, um, Chinese, although, you know, the fortunate thing is that the, the name is still out there. These types of cars, they should hold their price well and they should appreciate. And there is a large enthusiast market for things like this. Um, and to be honest, it's almost like having a, um, well, this is the equivalent of having a five series, BMW five series, I would say. Why do I say that is because I know MG also do a ZS from this era and that's more kind of towards the three series market. I would say that's their competitor, um, at that time. And then the, the ZT is more of the kind of premium and you definitely notice it, you know, the, the interior of the ZS it, it is not, I wouldn't say it's as premium as this. Um, you can tell that this is the kind of more a bit up market and they've tried to maybe even compete against this BMW 7 series, potentially at the time, it's got the space. Uh, I mean, you've got space for a V8 there. You've got space to sit comfortably. I'm six foot, um, pretty much exactly six foot. So don't try and comment something like, say like, oh, he's 5'10 or something like that. And then he's trying to round it up. Um, if you want, come and measure me. <laughs> what else is it to talk about? When I was younger, I've experienced, especially being a passenger, I've had more experience on the ZTT, which is the state. More of my experience actually ended up being on the, on the opposite, on the side that I'm actually on right now. Um, so I was more of a passenger at the time when I was a, when I was a young one. Uh, I can see a sheep over there. Might go say hello to it. There's a lot of MGs out there from that still British made that you can pick up for probably a fraction of the cost of a BMW that might have like an engine like a BMW. And that's why this is like the CDTI BMW M47 diesel turbo engine. So that's gonna be the, the end of this video for the MG ZT. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment on your thoughts of this vehicle and what do you just think of MGs in general? And subscribe if you're new and drop a notification bell for to keep updated for new content and tell me in the comments below what type of content would you like to see more on the channel and i will reply to you guys as soon as possible and try and make more content that you guys like there's a specific type of card that you'd like for me me maybe to do a video on then we can see what we can do uh if you want more maybe gaming related content back in like back in the day or content like this let me know uh, and i'll see what i can do either way hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day uh and see you guys in the next video